Hello and welcome everyone. Megan Gower and Calvin Wetzel from Her Hoop Stats are back with you to preview more Thanksgiving tournament action. We got the Baja Mar Pink Flamingo Championship kicks off on Thanksgiving Day on Thursday. Seven total games across three days, all on Flow Hoops. This is the time of year when Megan and I always dish out that 30 bucks. You guys should as well. These are going to be great games. We're going to break down the whole field, seven teams, seven games. Let's just get it kicked off with the 11 a.m. start, NC State versus Maryland. We've seen NC State lose to South Carolina. This is their first top 10 game since that game. Can they rebound from that loss? In my opinion, yes. I think they're going to play a really good game coming out in this tournament. And then Maryland, obviously, coming off a top 10 win from this weekend they beat Baylor at home I mean the thing I'm most interested to see here is what can Maryland's defense do I harp on this a lot I have yet to really see anything from them on the defensive end that impresses me and I think if they want to be a team that's going to make a deep run in March they need to clean it up on the defensive end so what can they do against Eliza Kinane what can they do against Reyna Perez how can they kind of try to contain some of NC State's best players. To your point about the offense, the Her Hoop Stats ratings, Maryland is first in offense. NC State is number two in offense, actually. So you got the top two offenses. Like you said, yeah, Maryland's going to have to defend. Their last game, they got a really big win over Baylor, but they only played seven players in that game. And Diamond Miller, you know, sort of still struggling with that knee injury as well. They played four of their starters, basically the whole game, 39 and a half plus minutes. So I'm really interested to see how how this team holds up just depth wise. It's got to be fatiguing, especially when you're the all gas, no breaks team and you're, you're trying to get up and down the court and you're playing four starters, 40 minutes. That's tough. And and if you look at their pace this year, it's actually outside of the top 100, which is crazy for them. But I, but I think that just speaks to the fact that they don't have enough bodies on the bench right now. And they're having to play a little bit more in the half court, which hasn't hurt them yet like I said they're still the number one offense in terms of points per possession but it's a little bit of a different look for them so so I'm interested to see you know how they hold up down the stretch in this game for sure yeah I think that's going to be an important thing for them as well they are missing some key pieces so that's going to hurt them on the offensive end and can they make up for that on the defensive end is a really good question for Maryland to try to answer this week exactly yeah in particular on the defensive glass I think because NC State the biggest thing that, that they're doing better this year than they did last year offensive glass they were not in the top 200 in that category last year now they're rebounding over 40 percent of their own misses led by four bench players coming off the bench and really cleaning up the class for them so definitely something to look for in this game can maryland box out can they can they stay fresh can they defend well enough to beat this nc state team let's move on to game number two another doozy another top 10 battle indiana versus stanford another you know injury note that that we should throw out there we don't know um, about Haley Jones. We do know you said she's traveling, right? You did yeah, see she did travel traveling. with the team. So she is in the Bahamas. We just don't know whether or not she's playing. <laughs> All right. Well, if she's coming, fingers crossed, she's going to be on the court. She was not on the court for their win over Gonzaga the other day. Gonzaga built up a lead. Stanford had to come back, barely was able to eke out a four point win over the Zags without Haley Jones. They also struggled in that loss to Texas, even with Haley Jones. Um, so what are you looking for? From, from Stanford and then as well as Indiana in this second game? Yeah, I mean, I think from Stanford, a big part of this is going to come down is Haley Jones playing or not. I think this is going to be a really, really tough game for them to win without Haley Jones. That's, I think she's clearly been their offensive leader so far this season, so they're going to need her on the floor for this one. But other than that, I mean, Indiana is a pretty solid defensive team. We saw them really struggle against Texas's defense. I'm interested to see if we can just see Stanford take a bit of a step forward there. Can they figure out how to run their offense when they're there is a tough defensive presence on the floor. Can they figure out that point guard position a little bit more? It's not going to happen overnight, but we just got to keep seeing, I think, strides forward for them there. On the flip side, Indiana started off the season with that huge win over Kentucky. They've looked really, really impressive so far, but this is their first top 10 game. So I think, you know, a win for them over the defending national champions would make a huge statement about where this team is going into the rest of the non-conference slate and into the Big Ten. You brought up Stanford's offense, obviously, missing Keanu Williams now, who went to the WNBA, their point guard last year. And that absence showed up a little bit in, the, in some of their early games so far. And I think the tough thing about missing Haley Jones, if she's unable to go, is that she's not a point guard, but she is someone I think you can sort of run the offense through in different spots on the floor and she can make plays. So if, you, if you're if you missing her as well, that's just another monkey wrench to throw, you know, for Tara Vanderveer. And she's obviously a Hall of Fame coach for a reason. She'll figure it out, but it's definitely tough. And especially against this Indiana 
squad who, like you said, has been playing incredible basketball early on. I think the other thing interesting in this one is the matchup in the post. Obviously, Mackenzie Holmes has been fantastic for Indiana to start off. And Cameron Brink has also been really good for Stanford. Two very different post players, but I'm excited to kind of see them go to battle against each other. Yeah, definitely. You know, Brink more more of that stretch shooter can really pull Mackenzie Holmes away from the basket. Kenzie Holmes, one of the most efficient scorers around the rim. Obviously, you know, helps. She plays with basically a three-point guard lineup. I don't know if you really call them all three-point guards, but they're all averaging five assists a game. Ali Patberg, Cole Cardano, Hillary, and Grace Berger, one of the best backcourts in the country. This might be a little bit of a hot take. Indiana's starting lineup, not, not the whole team. They don't go that deep on the bench. Their starting lineup can compete with any starting lineup in the country, Timmy. These top five, when you look at they're all averaging over 11 points a game. Like I said, three of them are getting five assists a game. You have Alexa Goulbe, who's a perfect complement to the other four rebounds, defends, can finish and, and can shoot if you leave her to help on, on some of the others. Grace Berger is obviously just a do-it-all, which you have three triple doubles last year. Cardano Hillary and can really light it up at 29 points earlier, earlier this year. They don't have the AZ Fudd on the bench for the Dorka Juhas. They don't have the Cam- Camilla Cardoso on the bench. So they're not in that top tier in the country. But if it's five on five, I'm taking them, you know, to go toe-to-toe with them. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, their starting lineup is amazing. It's just the depth that kind of throws them down a little bit, but they're still, I mean, they're the number four team in the country for a reason. And we saw that against Kentucky, those 35 can really get a lot done on the floor, even with a player like Ryan Howard. So our next game, game three, final game of Thanksgiving Day, tipping off at 4 p.m., is Washington State versus Miami. Neither team is ranked. What are you looking for from this game? I mean, Washington State had a great freshman last year in Charlie's Ledger Walker. Excited to see her in a kind of this kind of tournament format to start off this year. They're three and out so far to start the season. So exciting to see what they're going to do here and then come Pac-12 time. And, and her sister obviously is back as well um, due to the COVID year. Uh, Crystal Ledger Walker, both of those players, you know, they, they protect the ball and they're both averaging almost three steals a game over two and a half. So between that and in the rebounding advantage on both sides of the ball, Washington State is, is a great shot volume team, which is what I love about them. They, they're always going to get more shots up than their opponents, it's just a matter of whether they go in or not. They are missing Ula Matuga. She's part of their, their big front court pulling down over 20 rebounds a game. Definitely still think they should be favored over this Miami team who's really you know they're 4-0 but they've struggled against lesser competition they're averaging under 60 points a game and they haven't really played any high level competition yet they're really struggling to make shots shooting under 40 percent from the field under 40 percent from two actually and under under 26 percent or under 27 percent from three so they're they're definitely gonna you know have to figure some things out if they want to get some wins in this field Washington State meanwhile could could be that team last year they were that upstart team that you know was really fun and we all sort of jumped on the bandwagon for a while so I'm excited to watch them for sure yeah a team i think that's fighting to try to get into the postseason into the ncaa tournament this year and this kind of slate for them is a big chance to pick up some wins that could do that for them but as we move into friday we have stanford who we already touched on a little bit taking on you know i think the only team we haven't brought up yet south florida who gets the lecture of being in the bahamas for longer than any of these other teams because they've already been there they just had a great performance Today, as we're recording this, against Oregon, knocked off the number nine Ducks. Um, gave UConn a run in that tournament as well. I'm not sure how it works that they get two tournaments in the Bahamas, but <laughs> great, great scheduling by Jose Fernandez for them. So Stanford, South Florida, the only game on Friday tips off at noon. What are you looking for in this one? Yeah, well, I mean, for South Florida, they've had a tough week. They've played Tennessee. They've played UConn. They've played Oregon. I think they're in really good shape to have won one of those games. This is a team, in my opinion, that is much better than their 23rd in the country rating ranking. I think they're a top 20 team, maybe even a top 15 team. So excited to see them and yet another test to start off the season. They've played a really tough schedule this week, so they might be a little tired, but still excited to see what they can do against Stanford. And then I also think it's going to be an interesting game because this USF team is very defensive minded. They play their offense is okay, but they're really where they excel is on the defensive end. If we just saw Stanford struggle against a Texas team, that's kind of similar in that way. So this will be a really good test to see where Stanford can kind of come back from some of the struggles they had against Texas, but also a chance to see can USF pull off a pretty major upset. Yeah, I think the fact that, you know, you're talking about this game as being a test for Stanford (laughs) tells you everything you need to know about how South Florida has played, even though they are, like you said, coming off a one and two week Gave UConn a run, gave Tennessee a run in their own building. Um, this is this is the type of week we were talking off air that they could have dropped today's game at Oregon and gone 0-3. And I still might have thought that they should move up in the rankings from number 23. 
just how how well they've played. I like you said, they're they're always hanging their hat on the defensive end. That's always going to be there. I've been impressed with the fact that their offense has actually held its own. It's never going to be their strength, you know, and it's never going to be elite. But but they've been able to score points. Even today, Elena Cheneke, their leading scorer, went two for fourteen, only had four points, and they still had other people step up and score the basketball. And when you're a defensive minded team. If you can have that level of offense to the point where you just have to have enough scoring where, you know, if one or two players are having an off night, you still have at least someone who's able to put the ball in the hoop and find ways to score, whether it's on putbacks, right, or, or Sydney Harvey had a great game today. So I've been very impressed with South Florida in that respect um, and all other games. And I think if their offense can even just hold its own, their defense is obviously elite and they're going to, they're going to go a long way this year. Agreed. Yeah. Sydney Harvey is one of those players that kind of doesn't get as much attention because she plays at USF plays in a mid-major conference, but one of the better players in the country, someone that should be getting more attention and she's showed out so far in the Bahamas. I'm sure we'll see that again in this game. And I think this one's kind of one that I'm really circling. I know we've got the two top 10 matchups on Friday, but I think this one has potential to be just as good of a game. If Haley Jones is not playing in that game, I'm just going to go on record and pick South Florida to win that game. I agree. I think if they don't have Jones, I think it's going to be really hard for them to win. We just saw them struggle against Gonzaga. I think the South Florida team is a lot, as good as that Gonzaga team is, the South Florida team is a lot better. Without Jones, this is going to be a really, really difficult game for Stanford to win. You look at South Florida and Texas, I don't know if there's really that much difference between them. If that's the case, Stanford might be in trouble because Stanford <laughs> had a tough time with Texas. If South Florida is anything like Texas, they could be in trouble again. Even with Haley Jones, they had Haley Jones in that Texas game. So so who knows? South Florida might give, give, them, give them all they want, even with Haley Jones on the court. Yeah, they just got to execute down the stretch better. We saw that with Tennessee. They struggled down the stretch. Today, even they almost let things slip away a little bit against Oregon down the stretch. If South Florida can execute down the stretch, they definitely have the potential to pull off the upset here. Absolutely. It's, it's great for them to have all these, you know, challenges early on because if they can work out those kinks in November of, of executing down the stretch, you know they're going to be in position in the tournament at some point, first round, second round, or they have a lead late in the game and they're going to have to hold it. So it's great that they're getting these opportunities now and, and you know, it'll, it'll benefit them come March. While we're on Stanford, the next game, let's just stick with Stanford. Stanford versus Maryland. We already kind of talked about both teams have, you know, personnel question marks with Haley Jones, Faith Masonis. Um, you know, Diamond Miller, and then obviously Katie Benson from Maryland. Um, we're, already, we're already sort of touched on both teams, but g- give me a pick for this game. Who are you picking in Stanford, Maryland? I think I'm going Stanford. I know a lot of people are really high on Maryland. I just can't get behind them being like the number three team in the country without playing any defense. And I will not like back down on that take until I see them play some defense. So I think I'm going Stanford. My pick, I think actually is going to depend on the personnel. If Haley Jones is in there. I think I'm going to Stanford regardless of whether any of those Maryland players play. Katie Benson is, is the one that makes the biggest difference with her shooting, but I still think, you know, Haley Jones can can do more more than that to cancel that out without Haley Jones though I actually do think Maryland has a shot to win this game I their, their defense it is what it is I wouldn't put it at the level of Iowa necessarily but it's it's certainly not their strong suit I would maybe we can call them the anti-South Florida in that regard <laughs> I do think that that their defense has the potential enough to sort of hold its own to to how well they can score the basketball they're, they're the number one ranked offense right now points per possession so so to me, if Haley Jones isn't out there, the way Stanford struggled with Gonzaga and the way they've looked early on without Keanu Williams, I'm I'm going with Maryland in this game. I think Haley Jones does does make the difference to switch my pick, put that over the top. That's fair. I'd counter you with the fact that Baylor did put up 72 on Maryland, which is the same, basically the same amount of points they put up on the other teams that they put this season, New Orleans, UT Arlington, some teams that we're not going to be talking about come March most likely. So I think that says something about where the Maryland defense is at, but I agree. I mean, it's definitely a closer game without Haley Jones with Haley Jones. I think Stanford probably gets the win fairly easily. I think there's, I don't just see anyone on Maryland really having an answer for Haley Jones. This will be a good game either way though. I think no matter who plays this game is going to be definitely tight in the fourth quarter um, and just another what we've what we're used to seeing this week, fantastic game. While we're on fantastic games, we we touched on it a little bit earlier, but NC State taking on Washington State. NC State obviously will be the favorite, but Washington State was a tournament team last year. Get a lot of those pieces back. Obviously, we talked about they're a little bit thinner in the front court for this tournament, which could be a factor when you have to deal with Elisa Kunain. But what 
chances are you giving them, Megan, to pull this upset? I think it's pretty low. I think NC State has a really, really solid team. I think they're better than number six in the country. We just saw, I mean, two weeks ago, how well they played against South Carolina. NC State looks really solid. Washington State, a lot is going to have to go right for them in order to pull off this upset. So I think I'm giving it to NC State, but I still think it should be at least an interesting game. I agree. Yeah, I, I definitely think NC State will pull away this one at the end. Um, but I, you know, talk about Washington State's shot volume. I do think they'll win the shot volume battle. It's one of those games where if they happen to get lucky and have one or two players, you know, most notably Charlie Sledger Walker, maybe you get hot and start making some shots. They're going to get enough shots, shot opportunities with how they offensive rebound, you know, how they protect the ball. Um, that that if they get lucky and a bunch of those shots fall, every once in a while you have one of those nights. And, and I definitely think they're within reach of an upset. All right, our last game of the tournament, 8.30 p.m. Saturday evening, Miami versus Indiana. Is there any chance Miami pulls this off? I think we're going to get that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all due respect to Miami. That yeah, made sorry, all the analysis we need on this one, huh? <laughs> I, I agree. Hopefully Miami can at least keep it interesting. Um, but Indiana is just clicking too well with all their starters back and all the experience they have. All right. I've got a question for you. Who do you think wins right. the most games in this tournament? You can give me an answer with the players that are potentially missing and without if you want. But who? Did, I know Stanford has a bit of a leg up because they played three. But who do you think wins the most games? <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting question because Stanford does play three games. South Florida plays one. Everyone else plays two. So in theory, the answer should be Stanford. However, Stanford, their three games are all against really good opponents. They don't get Miami. They don't even get Washington State, who's a quality opponent, but probably the sixth best team in this field out of seven. Um, Stanford doesn't get either of those two. They get Indiana. They get Maryland. And they get South Florida, probably three of the top four other teams, with the exception of NC State. So it's going to be tough. I'll, I'll give you the two answers. With Haley Jones, I do think Stanford has enough that because they have that advantage of having that extra game, I think that's enough with Haley Jones. They go two and one. Maybe maybe they tie. Someone else goes two and zero. Oh. Um, but as long as they win two of their three, they get at least a tie, right? Right. Someone else has a chance to play three. So without Haley Jones. I could actually see a scenario where Stanford goes one and two. And in that case, I think NC State and Indiana both have the best two paths to two and oh here among the, the schools that play two games. Um, if Stanford is, you know, without Haley Jones, they're struggling. Indiana plays them uh, in the first game, which is which is an advantage too. if Haley Jones isn't ready to go then, but she is ready to go for the latter two games. You know, Indiana might get lucky in that regard. So you make me pick one, say Indiana, but with Haley Jones, I'll say Stanford. There's my answer. That's fair. I think I'm going with NC State because the Haley Jones thing is such a question mark right now. I don't think NC State loses either of their games. I think they beat Maryland and I think they beat Washington State. I do think, though, you're correct. Indiana has a chance to go 2 0 here. As does Stanford have a chance to go anywhere from 1 and 2 to 0 and 3 to 3 0? I think Stanford is a wild card right now. The, Haley Jones is a really big variable going into this tournament. So hopefully we get to see her in action. All right. I don't know if they have a tournament MVP. They probably do. If not, let's pretend they do. Let's finish up by picking a tournament MVP. Oh, I'm going to go Eliza Kinane. Like I said, I think NC State, regardless of who's playing in this tournament, goes 2-0. So I'm going to go Eliza Kinane. All right. All right. I am going to go with, honestly, I feel like there's probably multiple players in Indiana that I could pick if, if Indiana goes 2-0. I'm going to go with Grace Berger because – I'm a Grace Berger fan. I'm a Grace Berger stan now that she's hit all those half-court <laughs> shots. I was already on the bandwagon with all the triple doubles and just the way that she does everything on the court. I think she's going to stuff the stat sheet again. If Indiana can knock off Stanford, I think they go 2-0. and And so I'll go with Grace Berger. I wish NC State played Indiana because yeah. <laughs> you went with NC State for your MVP and your 2-0 and pick. I went with Indiana for both of mine. <laughs> we really need to just settle this on the court, but unfortunately we don't get that matchup. So maybe we will have to wait until... The tournament. We did get that matchup last year in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Indiana won. All right, Megan, thank you for joining me. Thank you for all our watchers and listeners for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to Flow Hoops and tune in to all these games while you're eating your turkey. Also, don't forget to follow at Her Hoop Stats on Twitter, Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hang out with us all season long as we cover women's college basketball.